uh, out of her... For, 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 for. <laughs> I just remembered to turn my microphone on! <sighs> it's just one of those days, guys. <laughs> What's up guys? <laughs> Welcome back. I'm in my guest bedroom <laughs> because they're building a house behind my house and it's so loud. It's so loud. There's music, there's hammering, there's nail guns, there's saws. So anyway, today we're going to be talking about the Lawless The Little One palette. I've been asking you guys kind of on my community tab what you wanted to gain from a review for this because I don't know, at first glance y'all, it's pretty straightforward. It's an edited palette that's supposed to be very everyday, small for travel, things like that. And of course, holds up same clean beauty standards that Annie Lawless stands by, her clean AF standards for her entire brand. So the main things that you guys kind of asked about were uh, the warmth slash coolness of this palette. You wanted to know whether the swatches kind of hold up online to, you know, my experience, the overall performance of it, and whether you can get several or at least one really good everyday look out of this because, well, that's what you're trying to do, right? Is get a really nice, versatile, all-in-one travel palette. So we will do a full application. I'm going to give you guys the lowdown on the brand itself, the ingredients, that's gonna be pretty quick, the packaging and things like that, just because this is obviously a brand that prides itself on its cleanliness and its quality of ingredients. I'm going to give you guys kind of a rundown on how it compares to the original Lawless The One, which could be also known as the big one <laughs> palette at this point. Um, and then I will close with my final thoughts. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and jump in. I forgot my primer in the other room. Dooby dooby doo. So there is a cat sleeping on the bed behind me and I would not be at all surprised if he uh, made a cameo in this video <laughs> at some point. He like can't seem to keep himself out of mischief. He loves to just walk up underneath my lights and headbutt them, which of course is bad. Uh, my camera is even worse. And even this little stool that I have my mirror stuck on right now is like pretty precarious. I really don't want him doing that. So um, there's, a, there's a pretty good chance and it's not Per Monster. No, it's Bruce. The mischievous one. Okay, a little bit of Thrive Primer there. It's just how I like to get the party started. I think that it makes a big difference in the color payoff of my eyeshadow and I just whacked my fingers on my pants. So the first thing that I wanna do is take this big fluffy brush from Wayne Goss right here and I'm just dipping it into first base, which is this white shade and I'm just going to put a little dusting everywhere and just set my primer. The white shade in this palette and the black, which is called Plunge, are the same black and white shade that's in the Lawless The One palette, the original one. But it's worth noting that the other six shades in this palette are completely new outside of the original palette. The other big difference is that you'll see that they don't have any of the like really glittery shades. So those shades are very soft. They have this amazing payoff, but they don't travel very well. When this was shipped to me, I want to say Cutie was kind of broken, and it's because this particular formula is just a little bit more fragile and hard to ship. And this tiny little guy, being more travel-oriented, more designed for that, they left those really, really metallic shadows out. I don't know if that was intentional, but that's how it worked out. These are the most metallic shades that are in there, and you can see that they are, even though they're beautiful, they're definitely really beautiful and satisfying and creamy, they're just more satin, whereas this is like foiled. The other thing that's interesting about this palette versus the original The One palette is that you end up with so many more in-between shades. So when you open up yesterday, basically when I wanted to make sure I had my thoughts together, I guess, on the difference between the two, I decided I was like, okay, I'm gonna do a look with this one and then I'm gonna try and mimic it with this one and see if I can get them to kind of meet in the middle. The issue I ran into was that, yes, there are a lot of kind of browns of the same value in this, but there's not really as many tans. And so you do end up having to kind of lean on this shade right here and mix it with the browns in order to achieve kind of these warm tans that are in here. So those are the swatches for all of the mattes. So you'll see that there are three browns that are pretty similar to one another. I feel like she could have gone a little bit more beige with one of these. Like, even this one being like the lightest brown in the palette 
the lights are kind of working tricks on your eyes. It's not as light as it looks. You still have to use a lot of the white in order to get it to lighten up. So let's go ahead and I will sort of show it to you in action. Going to start with the 03 brush from Wayne Goss and I'm going to use that shade, which is called Pony Matte Golden Brown. And I'm going to use that to create my transition area. And I'm gonna try and just use the mirror that's in the palette so that we can see whether this is like, you know, a good travel situation. Now these are very pigmented. One of the things that Annie puts a lot of emphasis on is that even though her ingredients are natural, her aesthetic is not. I think that that's a very interesting call out because I mean, if you look at any of her social media or anything like that, the girl has not spared a product on her face. She's just a very, very maximal makeup applier. And to me, I think that the test of whether I think that this palette is worth it or whether the one was worth it is whether it applies to more than just that, you know, like whether I can get an everyday look out of it, not just, you know, a makeup maximalist look. I'm just like fumbling on my words today. It's just one of those days, guys. I feel like I took myself out of my normal environment and now I'm just like, who am I? <laughs> what is YouTube? I really like the way that that kind of goes on and then also continues to be spreadable. You don't have to continue to lay more product down in order to get it to blend. Very nice shade, but you can see that's the second lightest shade in the palette and we're already at I don't know, like a golden brown, like a not deep, deep, but a medium golden brown. There's not like a, a nice medium beigey, I don't know, khaki tone uh, to this palette. So definitely keep that in mind. If you're like really, really pale skinned, you're going to want to really lean on that white shade in order to get some more like maybe daytime eye looks. I could be wrong. I don't know what you wear during the day. So transition shade looks beautiful. I do want to mention, I'm trying out a new foundation today. It is full coverage. I always say this, but I feel like you kind of set the tone for your entire face of makeup by the amount of coverage that your foundation provides. So it's like when you choose your foundation and you choose your kind of like complexion look, that's going to dictate like how made up the rest of your makeup can look. Because we're trying to see if this is more of an everyday versatile palette, I do want to try and keep it a little more daytime, but I still kind of want to like show you guys what it's capable of. So. I'm putting a little bit of that white shade up near my brow bone, not necessarily to highlight it, but more just to sort of blend it into my natural skin tone because that brown doesn't really look all that at home, just blend it on its own. I tweezed my eyebrows for this. Okay, I'm going to next take a smaller brush and I'm going to go in with the brown shade here. And it's gonna make things look pretty dramatic pretty quickly. This shade is called Smolder. Putting that on a little Sigma brush here. This is the Small Tapered Blending E45. And I'm just gonna build a little bit of crease. I think that that's beautiful. It's so easy to work with, it really is. I will say, when you're going with products that have limited ingredients, and when I say limited, I mean they've been limited and edited for a reason. What tends to happen a lot of times is that you sacrifice creaminess. It's the same thing that happens with like a clean foundation or anything like that. You are sacrificing usually like synthetic stabilizers and things like that. They'll lean on like natural oils, um, but there won't be like dimethicone and stuff like that in there because that is what makes things very satisfying. Intoxicating is a word that I use often, much like, you know, Tati's palette, the way that it just, everything is just like super creamy and blinding and blendy. And it's of course harder to achieve those kinds of performance qualities with a product that doesn't have of Teflon <laughs> in it. So these perform really, really beautifully. They don't have that weird slick lotion-y thing that some eyeshadows do when they do have tons and tons of stabilizers in them, but they still blend really, really easily, really, really quick and have really great pigment payoff. So there are, there are two of these sort of shimmery, they're not metallics, but they're shimmery, like I said, and that is Luster and Bonfire. We have a metallic gold and metallic bronze. We're gonna go with the bronze and I'm just going to put that on my lid. Yeah, that was the right choice. I like that very, very much. And maybe we'll just like put a little bit of the gold right on the, uh, the lash line. I like the way that that looks sometimes. But like I said, we're not getting super creamy foil. And when you start to blend this, you'll notice that like the, the glitter will kind of leave. 
It's definitely not, like I said, the Tati palette, but at the same time, I think that for an everyday palette, the amount of payoff that you do get from this lasts. <laughs> it, it stays the same all day. And so that stands in stark contrast to me against a lot of the Clean Beauty eyeshadow palettes that I've used before that are just like really difficult to put on. They don't last for anything, Ari Perez, I'm talking to you or even like the last, oh gosh, I mean, the, the RMS holiday release really put things in perspective for me. I was like, I should be grateful for stuff that just performs really easily like this. Super minimal fallout. The only fallout is when my big clumsy fingers touch the wrong part of my eye. I'm just gonna take an empty brush and sort of blend the brown into the bronze. If you're not running your mouth, you could get this done really, really fast. Like this is not a difficult or uncooperative formula at all. So I'm going to finish this out real quick and do like my under eyes and my brilliant eye brightener and stuff like that. So we will zoom through that really quickly. brightener to do my highlight on my brow bone and also on the inner corner. That's because I don't fault any palette, self-contained or otherwise, for not having a highlight shade light enough for me. I am happy enough that they gave me an out, which is what that white shade is, and not a like a, a silvery pearl or something like that. I can keep one of those on hand because that's very personal. just one of those days, guys. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put on eyeliner and mascara and a little bit of brow mousse, and I'll be right back with you to talk without doing anything with my hands <laughs> so that we can actually get some thoughts out. <laughs> and we did it. I feel like I look somewhat normal, right? Kind of, I don't know. It feels pretty good. So let's talk about the brand itself, Fan Fanded, Founded by Annie Lawless. Founded by Annie Lawless. She actually started the Suja Juice Company, the, you know, fresh squeezed, cold pressed bottles of juice that you see. She's like one of the co-founders. And I guess she just ran with it. And so she also started Lawless Beauty. And, you know, I've loved almost everything that I've tried from her line. She is, like I said, her aesthetic is very maximal. Her foundation is full coverage and fairly matte. It's a very beautiful coverage matte foundation, but it's definitely an aesthetic, you know? And so keep that in mind when you're talking about Lawless. This is very much just like never shying away from pigmentation and from intensity. So that is kind of her overall aesthetic is natural, but far from natural, clean AF, making sure that everything is very, you know, like talc free, very conscious. And also all of the packaging is cardboard. So yes, there's a mirror in here. It's not as sustainable, you know, it's not zero waste, like with the mirror and everything um, as the, uh, the Aether Beauty palettes, which don't even have like a magnet in them or anything like that. But she does do a really good job of, you know, making sure it's like metal pans, uh, paper packaging, everything's just printed on like soft touch cardboard. Feels really nice and heavy, feels very luxurious. And I will say that I, it is my assumption, like I said, I'm kind of reiterating, but it's my assumption that she went with not doing the crazy, crazy foils in this palette because they don't travel as well. So. Other things that I want to discuss as kind of the differences here, if you're kind of in the camp of trying to make a decision between the two. So this is a decidedly warm palette for absolute certain. I would say the closest thing you get to uh, a neutral or a cool is like these two, and they are still quite, quite warm. Still quite warm. Uh, that's a terrible swatch khaki. They're over here. <laughs> There you go. Those are all pretty darn warm. This brown right here does a really nice job of building a crease, but it is not a cool toned gray brown by any means. That said, you don't get a whole lot of cool tones in this guy either. Even the, the purple here is a very like red plummy purple. And I just think that that was her preference. And so it's all a lot of very sunset shades, very like orange and pink and like in and, and yellow and things like that. And you end up with these gorgeous, gorgeous golds, but not a cool tone palette. Neither of them really is. If you're going for a cool tone palette, girl, I cannot recommend 
highly enough the Aether Beauty Rose Quartz Gemstone Palette uh, for the pale skinned girls and the Amethyst Palette for your deep skinned girls because it is just a really good kind of encapsulation of neutral and cool. Now, if you don't like purple, don't go for the amethyst, but the complaint is real. Everybody complains that you can't, it's really, really hard to find a cool toned eyeshadow palette. It freaking is. <laughs> They're just not popular right now. And so if you are looking for a cool toned palette, even though this is only $25, which I think is a fantastic price for this, this is not going to satisfy any of your cool tone needs. So like I said, $25, you get eight shadows. It comes out to like $3.13 a shadow. Very similar to this one, you get 18 shadows in here and it is 60, whoo, what, $68 I wanna say. Uh, comes out to about $3.50 a shade. So actually for, they're all 0 0.05 grams. 0.05 ounces, 1.4 grams in uh, in each of the pans. So they're the same pan size um, between each palette. There is nothing on her site about like giving back or anything like that. That's not necessarily imperative to a brand that calls themselves clean, but a lot of times it's common, you know, that they have some kind of 1% back or something like that. She doesn't do anything like that. She just very much prides herself on performance and ingredients. And of course she's taken the, you know, the packaging into consideration. So final thoughts, do you need this palette? Are you looking for a warm toned palette for medium skin tones, medium to deep skin tone? I think deep, medium, and even like, I can get away with it. But if you're like pale as me or paler than me, you might find this a little bit mm, unaccommodating. I just feel like it's very high contrast. Um, and if you are looking for a warm palette and something that travels really well and something that's pretty well priced, I think $25 for eight shadows in the clean beauty category, especially pans of this size is pretty darn good. Um, then yes, absolutely. But if for some reason, you are looking for something that's going to really, really glow on your eyes. You want something exciting, or if you want um, more kind of like light beigey tones that like I would have wanted in this palette, or if you are wanting something cool toned, skip it. <laughs> you probably don't need this palette. The formula is beautiful, like I said, especially, and I shouldn't qualify that. It's like qualifying something for being a drugstore product saying like, oh, well the cost, but it's pretty good for the cost. It's really good for being a clean beauty eyeshadow formula. I, like I said, I've worked with so many clean beauty eyeshadow formulas that were just really, really frustrating. And this is completely unfrustrating. And I wore it all day yesterday and it really lasts. And there's almost no fallout. The only, like I said, the only time that it got anywhere I didn't want it was just because I have clumsy fingers and deep set eyes. So the performance really is there. If you're looking for a much more exciting version of this, I still love this palette. And like I said, man, ooh, ooh, my goodness, it's got some shades in it that you just don't see that often. This like iridescent, neutral, dusty pink, like come on. I need to do more looks with this palette because this whole mauve row right here, mm, yes. I've done some, you know, not filmed looks with this palette before. And uh, I will say that this is actually, my, my Instagram photo I think is actually done uh, with, with these, like my main picture, it's kind of blurry and old, but, um, but yeah, it's like a year old and I did it with these. It's so, so good for kind of bridging the gap between you want something exciting, but you also want something functional. This has the excitement in it. I feel like the excitement is what was left out of this by design. So hopefully that gives you like a pretty good idea of these. I think it's difficult to, difficult to kind of compare the two because they obviously are meant to serve different purposes. I'm gonna open up my community tab real quick and make sure that I get your questions answered. In search of a small holy grail palette for short work trips. So can the little one serve as the only travel palette you need or is it missing some of the essentials for an everyday neutral look? By neutral, if you mean neutral uh, colors like browns, Absolutely. If you're looking for something neutral as in not warm, maybe not. Uh, it just might not match your undertones. But yes, you can absolutely get a really, really beautiful day to evening look with just this palette. Uh, is it as cool toned as it looks in the Sephora swatches? No. I'm concerned that it's too warm, like the Tati palette. I would 100% compare it to the Tati palette. I think that I can't think of the names of her colors or I would have said, I think it's Story. The 
The tan that I have on my eyes reminds me so much of Story. Also, it's simple, but maybe too simple. Does it inspire you to make uh, to make you excited for an eye look? That's why I've been on the fence. Like I said, exciting is not the word that this palette brings to the table. I don't think that it was meant for that. If you are thinking that you want something really exciting, go for the one. Definitely looking for the Holy Grail Everyday Palette that's mostly business. Just knowing its performance in comparison to the one and if it's really worth it uh, with a little now. So all business. I would definitely say that this thing, yes, we have our little shimmers and everything, but it's a very business palette. Someone just said, yes. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, I know this might not be your gig, but it would be helpful to see how many how many different looks you can get from it. Maybe you could test it out for a week and take a picture or video of each eye look. I wish you knew what my life looked like. <laughs> I wish you knew how much I have going on. I would love to do something like that for you. But the, the problem is that there's a really high chance no one would watch it. And that's a really, really large, large time investment. Oh, don't I wish I had that many hours in a day. Uh, how, how does it compare to other small palettes that could be used for travel? Ooh, I have no idea. I don't have that many. Although um, I haven't tried the PYT one yet, but I will say it's better than the RMS one. That is it. Those are all the questions from you guys. So hopefully this satisfied them. If you enjoyed this slash found it enjoyable, give it a thumbs up. If, if you enjoyed this slash found this enjoyable, oh boy, Yagi. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on. My brain has left the building. I left it in the other room. If you enjoyed this slash found this helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. I would so love it if you did. Thank you so much for watching today, guys. I love you so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.